All right, so welcome back. Today in this video, we're gonna be looking at mechanics of materials. And this is the first section of this review for mechanics and materials. And we're gonna be specifically looking at shear and moment diagrams. So we're gonna be drawing a little bit in this section, placing our forces, looking at external forces, and just being really, really interactive. So have some practice problems for you all. And I'm gonna be going over some concepts that you will need to know for your civil FE exam. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with number one. All right, so number one says, given the following, AX is equal to zero, AY is equal to negative 10 kilonewtons, BY is equal to 55 kilonewtons. Find the shear force at point C. Okay. So let's look at this. What information are we given? Well, we're given, if I just look at this diagram, it looks like we're given some uh, external forces or reactions along this beam, okay? So we are given reactions, okay? <sighs> and we're trying to find the shear, goodness gracious, your writing is horrible, shear force. Okay, so we're we're looking for shear force at point C. All right, so let's go ahead and label our um, external forces. So we know this is equal to zero. The AX is equal to zero. AY is negative ten. kilonewtons All right okay so it's coming down negative 10 kilonewtons my by is is coming up 55 kilonewtons and i think those are all the forces so if we want to make sure that this is balanced you could do some of the forces in the y direction is equal to negative 10 kilonewtons coming down. I have another, it's coming down five kilonewtons per meter over a span of what, four meters. And then I have my BY coming up at 55 kilonewtons. And we have one more force acting at point D coming down at 25 kilonewtons. And when I add all these up, I get zero. So I know that this is balanced, right? This is a balanced beam. Um, also, the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. And the only forces could be potentially there is ax, and that is equal to zero. So, all right. So, what is shear force? Gotten that this beam is balanced, but what is shear force? Well, shear force is basically just the force that's acting on the beam at a particular point. So it's asking what is the force that is acting on the beam at point C, okay? So we can draw this, all right? And if we look at shear, we go to shear, in moment diagrams, this is what we're kind of in. 
All right, so they the handbook tries to show us how to do shear and moment diagrams, saying positive shear, negative shear, but this doesn't really help us. Um, so I'm gonna go go over it. Um, so basically, shearing force is positive if the right portion of the beam tends to sh to shear downward with respect to left and all right. So a positive shear is going up. Negative shear is going down. Okay. Positive shear and this is negative shear. Similar to a force, right? Got force if it's coming down, we treat it as negative. If we if it's going up, treat it as positive. All right. Okay. So let's look at we're gonna draw a shear diagram and the shear diagram just basically is where you redraw the beam and this line this black line that I'm drawing is the shear along the x direction so um, you have you're going to have your point C, which is what we're looking for the shear at. You're gonna have B, just what we're not looking for. We got point D at the end, and you got point A. Okay. So what what's the force at A? Okay. So we got the force at A. It is coming down. at negative 10 kilonewtons, right? And it's important to note, this is our negative, that's our line for our negative 10, right? So if I was to come down further, it might be negative 20 kilonewtons, but in this case, since our force at that point is negative 10 kilonewtons, then that's what our shear is at that point. All right. And it's important to note that your shear stays constant if no other forces are acting. So between here and here, right, there's no other forces that take place on it. So our shear is going to stay at negative 10 until to point C. Right. And even at Technically, at point C, it is negative 10 kilonewtons. So, in this particular example, we didn't put negatives or positives, but technically, this would be a negative, should be a negative 10 kilonewtons. But all in all, definitely 10 kilonewtons. Okay, so now we have, we've gotten to point C. What happens next? I'm just going to take you through kind of the whole scenario. So how do we find the shear from C to B? So let's look at shear C to B. And that is going to be equal to, well, we know at C we're at negative 10 kilonewtons, but it keeps coming down, right? So from C to B, we are continuing to go down five kilonewtons per meter. And then we multiply that over Our four meters. Okay. So this is four. All right. So the shear from C to B is going to equal negative 30 kilonewtons. All right. So what this is saying is, is okay, the shear was negative 10 until we started 
at point C. Then we gradually kept going down another. We went from negative 10 to this point is negative 30 kilonewtons, right? That's what happened here from C to B. Okay, now at point B, we have this big jump. So the shear at B is equal to, we're at negative 30, but what? We have this positive 55 kilonewtons, right? So V shear at B is equal to 25 kilonewtons. That means when we bounce, we bounce, right? So if there's a force coming up, it's gonna take us all the way all the way up to 25 kilonewtons. And it stops. All right, so then we continue, there's no other forces acting, so we continue from left to right. And then what happens at the end? Well, it's important to note, it should always come back down to zero. And so we're at 25 kilonewtons and we have a force that brings us back down at D to our zero point. Um, so yeah, we're back to zero. So this is what our, sh our shear diagram looks like. And it's important to note that the area Underneath this, this is like level two stuff. The area underneath is your moment. You're gonna use that for moment and max moment, stuff like that. Right now, we're just looking at shear, so our answer was B. Hey everybody. I know I didn't take time to formally introduce myself at the beginning, so I did want to let you know who I am and how I can best serve you as you're studying for your civil FE exam. So my name is James Huntley, and I am a civil engineer who has helped hundreds of individuals pass and dominate their civil FE exam. Now, I know this test is tough, and as you're going through material, you may be saying, I don't remember learning this stuff or gosh, these variables are so confusing or you just feel like you're really, really busy and there's so much material that you need to go through that it's a bit overwhelming. So I did want to let you know that I do help and work with individuals one on one to ensure that they pass their civil FE exam. And I've had individuals that have worked with me for 10 weeks, and that's the longest that it has been. And I've had individuals that have worked with me for two weeks. And we went back to back, day after day after day, hours on hours on hours, putting in the work, um, working together to ensure that they went ahead and passed, right? And this exam is so important because I know that you want to make more money. Um, I know that you want to, you know, get some promotions and be able to further your career and have your PE. So definitely want to open and extend a hand out. Want to be able to save you time, right? Because I know some people that watch my videos, you may have been watching my videos for six, nine, even 12 months and you still haven't passed your civil FE exam and that is the one thing that's keeping you from making more income more impact and furthering your career so it's definitely costing you um, money resources everything so looking to create more success stories um, I am looking to work with individuals 
one on one. I want to hop on Zoom with you. I want you to share what you're doing as you're solving these problems so I can spot out what you may be struggling with and open your eyes so that you're not going into this test completely blind. Now, for some of you, you may have failed a test once, twice, had some people fail five times, um, or you may be wanting to take this test initially and you just want to make sure that you pass it up front. So do have one-on-one -on -one services. I also have some uh, do-it-yourself uh, courses that if you're like, no, I got this, I got it all on my own, I know everything, or I, I'm going to take the time to study everything, I do have some resources and materials to be able to help you in that way. But my biggest fear is that you're investing in something, uh, these programs or these courses, and you know, you're not uh, getting back or having proper feedback to help you and to push you forward. You're just giving a bunch of information and no one's sharing with you what you may be actually struggling with or what's keeping you from passing your FE exam. So looking to create a ton of success stories. So feel free um, down in the description box below. I have a ton of resources, including one-on-one -on -one coaching. Let's hop on a call. Uh, it's no cost to you as far as, you know, us talking through your goals and what you're trying to do um, and kind of getting a feel for where you're at. Um, so have some programs where I can work with you one-on-one -on -one, and there's also some do-it-yourself courses, practice exams, study guides, resources, free material, all of that down in the description box below. So feel free to check out that stuff. If you like the video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. This is what I do. Um, we want to get you to the next phase of your civil engineering career um, and leave a comment. If you had any questions about um, what I went through, the information that I covered um, and feel free to um, definitely schedule a call with me and looking forward to creating more success stories. So be sure to check out this next video.